pixies so today I am filming a very special video to me that I have been wanting to film for a really long time now and you guys have been asking for it a lot too so yeah let's just get into it so basically today we are going to be talking about confidence and how to be more confident I get asked so often how to be more confident how to channel confidence I don't know why you guys think I'm so confident but Honestly, it's a compliment because I do like to think of myself as a comp confident person and I don't think there should be any shame in being confident in yourself. So yeah, we're just really going to get in the nitty gritty of all that, but before we get into anything, I want to show you uh, the cases that I was just using to take my mirror selfies because self-love. Caseify is actually sponsoring this video today. You guys know I've talked about Caseify before on my channel. I absolutely love Caseify. They're incredible. They're my favorite. Caseify is like my favorite thing just because they offer just the really the perfect balance between really cute cases and being able to feel really secure and safe with your case because they do actually offer military drop protection. Basically just like the best of both worlds. It's so sleek and not bulky and like ugly but it's so cute at the same time. I actually got some new cases since the last time you guys saw them on my channel. This one's actually compostable. Um, it's so cute. It says, be kind to your mother. And I just think that's so cute because you should be kind to your mom and you should also be kind to Mother Earth. And yeah, I really like this one. I think it's so cute. It's like the perfect size and love this one. They're donating a tree to the Earth Day Networks project to plant 7.8 billion new trees by the end of the year. Every time you buy a compostable case, they actually donate a tree, which is so amazing. But I got some others as well. This one is another one of my favorites. It's a little cow case. Oh my god, this is so, so cute. I've been wanting a cow one for a while. You guys know I'm vegan. I love my cows. And I just think this is really cute. They have literally so many options to choose from on their website. Thousands and thousands of designs. But if for some reason you can't find one there that you like, you can actually customize a case, which is what I did with this one. This one um, is so cute. It actually says, says Frankie on it. It's clear and it says Frankie. Frankie's my boyfriend. You guys have to go check out his channel, but I thought some little like Frankie merch, I mean not merch, but like, you know, a little Frankie like accessory would be cute. This one is like really good protection um, and it says Frankie. I just wrote Frankie in pink letters and made the border pink as well and I think it's so cute. This one also has great protection and it's just clear um, and it actually says I made it say pixie at the bottom because that's what I call you guys. Um, we're the pixies so I thought this was cute and it's very versatile because it's clear so yeah. Cute. I like that a lot. Actually, I want to show you a drop test right now, so let's do it. Okay, first I'll show you that it does indeed work. Here's my phone before, no cracks. Absolutely beautiful. My camera works. I always get so scared. <laughs> Every time. But we're completely fine. Ta-da! Everything's the same. Camera still works. Woohoo! So yeah, I literally love Caseify. Definitely go check them out. They're just the best of both worlds. You can go to caseify.com slash gg to get 20% off and match with me. So we can all, you know, be rocking these same cases. So confidence is something that is just so hard, I think, and is really a lifelong journey to really master how to feel confident in yourself and in your worth. First of all, I don't think you should be hard on yourself if you're not already like the super confident person. You guys may perceive me as a confident person and I like to think that I am for the most part, but it's still something that I'm working on all the time and you, if you like knew me and you know, like the people who are closest to me know that I'm not like all the time confident like sometimes I do get into funks and I do feel really self-conscious and really just not good about myself and you know I look in the mirror and I don't like what I see it's not like you just wake up and you're good you know it's a it's a lifelong 
process, I think, and something that you have to work at every single day. Confidence for me, like when I was younger, uh, in middle school is when I first started to feel really not very confident. I remember sixth grade was the year that I started being really aware of the way I looked and like the way I look compared to other girls. In middle school, it's when my eyebrows got really dark. They got really thick and really dark. They've never grown back to like what they were in sixth grade. I was very, very hyper aware of that. And you know, I always, it didn't help that kids would tease me and stuff, but it definitely was just something that made me feel really self-conscious and really not very good about myself. So of course, I tweezed them so thin, like little tiny pencils. Another thing in middle school that was really self-conscious for me was just hair in general. So um, not only did my eyebrows get hairy, but the rest of me got really hairy too. Um, I think it's just my genetics, um, but my legs, I remember the hair on my legs was so, so, so dark and just really thick compared to the other girls in my class. And I just felt so like a freak and felt like there was something wrong with me. And that's really, I think, stems from like this ideal that's pushed into our heads at young age that this ideal of beauty is like bare, bare haired, smooth women. And that's used to sell us products to get rid of our hair. It basically all feeds into this consumer culture and many, many of these companies are owned by men and these beauty standards and stereotypes are set for us by men to basically profit off of women's insecurity. I got acne. I got a lot of acne in, in middle school and I remember putting on so much foundation to try and cover it. I straightened my hair every single day because I did not know how to take care of it. My hair for me was something that was so like such a big insecurity and something that because I just didn't know how to take care of it, I felt like a freak compared to other people. And even my hair, I would try wearing my natural, my hair naturally, but then I would go to school with it straightened and everyone would be, everybody would be like, oh my God, you look so much better with straightened hair. Oh my gosh, you should straighten your hair more. And that really led to a really big insecurity. And I basically, I would wake up at five in the morning to, as a middle schooler, to put on makeup and to, to make sure my eyebrows looked fine, fine, and to straighten my hair at 5.30 in the morning before school every single day. I had to do it every day because the straighten in my hair wouldn't last. It would get wavy and poofy by the end of the day because my hair just did not want to be straight. In high school, I am really short, I'm 4'11", and that used to be such a big insecurity of mine too. The freshman in high school, or we were in eighth grade, but either way, I was like getting ready to go into high school. And I felt really self-conscious about how young I looked. And I knew I looked young because whenever I told people my age, they'd be like, oh my God, what? I thought you were in middle school and stuff like that. Like business people, like adults are so mean. Like they would say stuff like when I would tell them my age or my mom would be tell them my age, they'd be like, what? Oh my God, I thought you were in middle school. And I don't know why they didn't think that was like a damaging thing to say to like, a high school girl, but it was. And it made me so self-conscious about the way I looked and about um, the way I presented myself. I remember this one time I went out to lunch with some friends and they gave everyone normal glasses, but then they gave me a kitty cup. And I just felt mortified. I felt so just inferior. And it really held me back from a lot of things because it made me even feel like there were certain opportunities that I just couldn't do because I would look young and I was worried that everyone in the room would think I was young and that I shouldn't be there. One other thing that happened in middle school is I started to realize my nose and I realized that my nose, it's like, my nose isn't like huge, but it's pretty big, like from the front especially. Um, and then from the side, from the side it's like kind of smaller but it still kind of just has this bigger, like rounded bottom. Um, and I remember that I used to Photoshop every picture that I took of myself or that someone took of me. I would use this app. It wasn't even like Facetune or anything. I don't even know what it was, but it would basically would go in and physically adjust the nose to make it look thinner, which is just really upsetting because we're just fed these stereotypes and these standards of beauty that is just so hard for every single person to achieve. Like, of course there are some people who fit those standards of beauty and they're so beautiful too, but that doesn't mean that they're the only ones who are beautiful. Beauty ranges in so many different body types. Um, and obviously many of that also circulates from or comes from like Eurocentric ideas of beauty and um, just this pedestal we put European beauty on top of, opposed to any beauty that fits outside of the European white bubble. 
And then this past year was actually the first year I ever really felt very self-conscious in my weight because I think when I stopped dancing, I had danced like all through high school and middle school. So last year was the first year I really didn't dance that much and I didn't do much for exercise. It wasn't drastic, but for me it showed just because I had never seen myself like that. And it really did a number on my esteem, my self-esteem. And I started working out and I think I was doing it more for the appearance than how I feel. By the time it came around to the, my Chloe Ting video that I did, I think by then it was more I really just wanted to feel good because I could feel myself feeling like I didn't, that I just didn't feel as like strong as I used to. And that was a much better mindset than when I had been working out previous to that video and I was really just doing it because I wanted to look a certain way. I'm really starting to learn to love my new body type and really just accept that you're not gonna look like what you look like in middle school or in high school for the rest of your life. You're just not. Your body changes, especially like women, like your body changes to be able to support a possible like infant, a child in your body, which is incredible that your body can do that. And everyone's body just changes as you grow and as you get older it's never it's not going to stay the same so like me being able to not being able to fit into the clothes the t size zero clothes that I was able to fit in, in high school is okay that's totally okay you're not going to be the same size forever and there's nothing wrong with that I think there's another whole thing with like Instagram and it's all about angles okay it's all about angles and just remember that just because someone doesn't post it doesn't mean it's not there even me like I'm not I would never film a video like this but look ba boom but then I go like this and you're like whoa you know what I'm saying so it's all about it's all an illusion honestly and just remember that when you're scrolling through Instagram another thing with Instagram I think is that uh, there's this like thing assigned to women who post a lot of themselves and women who post selfies and women who post pictures that are usually just of themselves and I think that's threatening to people too usually men and it's often they're often labeled as conceited or stuck up and stuff like that I don't think that you being confident in your body or in your image or in your fashion or any of that and taking pride in that and being like, I like this. I like how I look in this. I think that's self-love. I don't think that's conceited. And I think that notion that it's conceited is definitely deeply rooted in misogyny and all that. So keep that in mind. And if you have a picture in your drafts that you've been wanting to post, you have a selfie that you've been wanting to post but you've just been too nervous, right now, I dare you, all of you, right now, pull out your phone. Yes, pull out your phone. If you're watching this on your phone, pause your video, go post the picture. Just do it. Aside from the physical confidence, I think there's also this really big mental thing that happens, especially to girls and women in middle school and in high school, especially those years, that will program you for the rest of your life and how you behave in this world. I think women are told to just be softer, be quieter, be less, be smaller all the time. And like for men, if a man is successful and a man has like power and money and stuff, that's seen as attractive. Whereas for women, I think it's changing, but I still think that it's often seen as dangerous, as threatening, just because I think men are threatened by it, which should really not be the case. Or that like in relationships, there's like supposed to be that power imbalance where like the man like takes care of the woman and all that. And I just think that's so messed up. And I think it really feeds into how people act in middle and high school, especially like, like little things. There's like studies about this. Women and girls raise their hands less at school. They raise their hands less. Why is that? Probably because you're told to be less and you're told to, you know, not contribute. And if you do, you're bossy. If you add your opinion and you, you disagree with people and you do all that, you're bossy. I remember throughout high school, there were points where I was, you know, I'd be nervous to disagree in a group. I wanted to be agreeable. I wanted to work well with everyone. So often I would know the answer to something and I would want to raise my hand, but I would be like, well, I already raised my hand once this class. Like I need to give others a chance. Whereas the boys in the class sometimes wouldn't even raise their hand. Stuff like that. And I just think that's interesting. You know what I'm saying? You know, working in a group and contributing your idea, but immediately following your idea. But if that doesn't work with you, it's okay. Or to kind of like push yourself down a little bit more, to be less threatening, to be less. And then if you do have your own opinions, I remember 
senior year, I started being like, you know what? Why am I holding back? I know the answer. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna act like the boys in my class. I'll raise my hand more than once during class. I'm gonna disagree with that person that just said that thing. I'm gonna tell them what's on my mind. I would be in a group and I'd say, I think this is how we should do it, period. And that was threatening to some people. There were some people who were really mean to me senior, junior and senior year because of that. And mostly boys that would basically bully me and say things behind my back or say that I was being bossy or that I was much or that I need to chill out it really shows how threatened men are by women who speak their minds and women who stand up for what they believe in and women who say their opinions like men say their opinions. Obviously I don't mean be a mean person and just be rude and railroad everybody but you know what? Sometimes it's okay to talk over a man. I mean, maybe not like nice men, but the ones who are always talking over you, talk over them sometimes. And that word bossy is assigned to people so early on. I remember people called me bossy when I was in elementary and middle school so much just because I was opinionated and I would say, I think we should do this and I want to be a leader. And I would act just like boys in my class would, but instead of being the popular guy or the cool guy for it, I was the bossy girl, and bossy was somehow an insult. And now, this is still something that's so prevalent in my life. Like, I'm a film major now, and I've noticed film is such a male-dominated industry, and I've noticed, like, I remember my very first day of film class. It was a studio class, and we were literally just trying out tripods or something. Something, like, super simple, like tripods. And I was paired with two boys, and they were both like, we can help you if you ever need any help outside of class. Or like, oh, have you ever worked a tripod before? Oh, do you want me to show you how to do this? Stuff like that, that, you know, could come off as like a nice guy, but really, it feels wrong. And when those things feel funny to you, they probably are. And those intentions probably aren't just to be a nice guy, they're probably to try and keep you down and not because they feel threatened to make sure that you don't, you know, make them too uncomfortable in your place in that industry, in that classroom, or in whatever situation you're in. So now, let's talk about some ways to combat all of this, because I've just ranted to you about all of this, all these issues, all these things on my mind. But let's talk about how to stop it. My biggest piece of advice for how to be more confident in all that stuff, in your physical self, in your body image, um, in wearing whatever you want without feeling like you're being too much the confidence to post that Instagram picture that you really want to post but you're worried you'll look conceited. Just do it. So, for me, what I did to basically combat all of this, to combat feeling insecure about how I looked, to combat feeling insecure about speaking my mind and raising my hand in class, is to just fake it. Fake it. For me, I grew up acting and doing all that and playing different characters. And when I would feel really insecure about myself, I would literally just pretend. I would pretend. I would look in the mirror, I'd look at my nose, and I just pretend that I liked it. Now, I don't let myself contour my nose. Instead, I put, I put bronzer all over my nose to make it stand out. Try to basically switch your mindset on things. And if you don't really believe it, just pretend you believe it. So if you don't like your nose, pretend you really like it. And like look up pictures of people that look like you or people who have noses like you. I remember it was so helpful for me to look at Lily Collins and women with really big, beautiful eyebrows, women with really beautiful like Jewish noses and to see that and to be like, wow, they're beautiful. I think they're beautiful, so why don't I think my nose is beautiful? Because she has a really similar nose to me, and she's beautiful. So doing stuff like that can really help you to be able to be like, okay, I do like my nose. Or if you're nervous to, you know, be the first person to speak in a room or something like that, or to raise your hand in class, pretend that you're really outgoing, just for like a day. Be like, I'm gonna pretend like I'm Hermione Granger. And raise your hand over and over in class. That might sound crazy, but that's literally what I would do. I would literally just be like, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like I'm not nervous. I'm gonna pretend like I'm this really outgoing person. I'm just gonna put on that act and boom. 
And that becomes practice so that you can just integrate that into your life and it becomes easier and easier and eventually you're not even pretending anymore. That might sound crazy, but faking it till you make it is so, so helpful. The things that make us unique are oftentimes the things that we're most insecure about. So start thinking of those things that make you unique as just that. Something that makes you so beautiful, so rare, so you, so incredible. Your nose or your eyebrows or I'm just using my own stuff, but whatever applies to you, think of that as your strength and something that is makes you stand out and makes you beautiful because everybody is beautiful in their own unique way. Literally, that's cliche, but they literally are. Affirmations and self-love is also just so important. Even if you look in the mirror and you hate what you see, take a step back, take a breath, and try to pick out one thing, just one thing that you love every single day. Say it in your head, say it out loud, write it down in a journal. Right now, down below in the comments, write one thing that you love about yourself. It doesn't even have to be something that's physical. It can be, I love, like for me, I love how kind I am. I think I'm a really kind person. I love how detail-oriented I am. I love how hardworking I am. I think I'm really smart. I do, I think I'm smart. I haven't always, but I do, I think I'm smart. Say that to yourself. And that's not me being conceited. That's just me showing myself some love. So stop associating loving yourself with being conceited. And that'll help a lot, I think. And then my next biggest piece of advice, and honestly, I have a little Nike symbol on, it's very fitting, just do it. Literally, just do it. Talk over that guy who talks over you all the time. See how that feels. Disagreeing with somebody in class, in class, try saying your idea and don't let yourself say, oh, but it's okay if you don't like it or, oh, it's not really that good of an idea. Don't say that stuff. Just own it. Own your idea and say it. Next time that you have an outfit that you really want to wear to school but you're too embarrassed because you think it's too out there or like too much, just wear it. You post when you take a selfie and you're, you really love it. You love how you look in it but you're too afraid to post it because you don't want to look conceited. Just post it. Like don't even think about it. Just post. Just do it. I mean, definitely think about what you post on the internet because on the internet, everything stays there forever. But you know what I'm saying. The more you play the character and the more you just practice just going for things that you feel insecure to do, the easier it will come. Me, one big insecurity for me was wearing shoes that didn't have a heel. If you're really short and you're insecure about that, go to school without heels. That was something for me that was so hard to do, but once I started doing it, I was like, why would I torture myself with heels every single day? When I, you know what, being small is cool. It's something about me that stands out. It's something about me that I love. It makes me me. I just wanted to kind of say all that stuff and just for real, just do it. Just stop holding yourself back. And even if it's scary at first, just rip off the band-aid, do it. And over and over again with that practice of just doing things that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but really, are valuing yourself, um, it'll become easier. Just remember like to value yourself, to look in the mirror and say you are smart, you are beautiful, you are loved. You are so valuable and you bring so much to this world. Watch for where you know you could be playing into this consumerism that's supposed to be feeding off of your insecurity. Like that's what it's supposed to be doing. So if you're constantly buying makeup to try and cover up your insecurities, that's you feeding into exactly how the system is supposed to work. Once you break free of that and you stop giving an, an F about that and about what others think of you, you feel so much better. You feel so much lighter, you feel so much happier and just so much more full and it really really does make the biggest difference. Just know your self-worth, catch yourself when you're caving and trying to be smaller, and challenge yourself to go out of your comfort zone a little bit more and more every single day, and it will become easier, I promise. I love you Pixie so much, I really hope that this video helped. Just remember, it's okay to not feel 100% confident. Even though you may think I'm a super confident person, even I still have so many insecurities, and it really truly is a lifelong thing that you need to work on every single day. So just remember that and be easy on yourself, love yourself, and just start with something small. 
Just start by saying, just start by finding one thing that you love about yourself and saying that to yourself today and tomorrow and the next day. Okay, but the sun is going down, but I hope that you guys all liked this video. Please comment down below something that you love about yourself. And also if you have any other ideas about how to be more confident, make sure you leave those down below as well. I would love to hear a little conversation going on down there. And yeah, I love you Pixies so much. You are beautiful, you are loved, you are valuable, you are smart, you are incredible. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you Kesify for sponsoring this video. And make sure you check out, go to kesify.com slash gg to get 20% off and match with me. Um, but yeah, I love you Pixie so much. Have a great night or day or whenever you're watching this. I love you, bye.